with this message and things that happened through my life and things I've learned uh, about wisdom. <coughs> we turn in our Bibles to Genesis. And, and that's the best place to start with this subject, is in the beginning. Genesis chapter 3. talking about here, the serpent, the devil, Lucifer, Satan, that's the guy, that's the man we want to talk about for just a minute. If you start in Genesis, the serpent picks up talking in verse 5, talking to Eve, for God doth know in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree desired to make one wise. Because the serpent had told her, you will know. And and. She took that word no as the being wise. The serpent deals in half truths. Right. He told her the truth and that you will know, and surely she did know after she ate that fruit. But in no wise, in, in, in no wise made her wise. There's a big misconception these days that wisdom, that knowledge and wisdom are the same thing. They're not. Amen. True. Knowledge is not wisdom, and wisdom is not knowledge. Wisdom is what you do with knowledge. They're two separate entities. They're two separate things. She thought, oh, I'm going to eat this fruit and it's going to make me wise. No, it didn't make her wise. It made her know. What did it make her know? It made her know that she was naked. Mm -hmm. It made her know that she was imperfect. That she wasn't complete. She took the fruit thereof and did eat. And also gave to her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open, and then they knew. They knew. And they took that knowledge. They didn't take that wisdom. They took that knowledge and they sewed to themselves aprons out of fig leaves. They knew that they were naked and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Here's a, here's a little example of knowledge and wisdom. You got a black car. Yeah, you, you know it's black. Wisdom says you better park it in the shade. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. Right. Wisdom says park that thing in the shade. Because you know it's black. So with so we see we see right there in this in the first in chapter three of Genesis that, that knowledge and wisdom are two different separate things. You know, when you, when you speak about wisdom, we have to speak about Solomon, known as the wisest man. He had a lot of wisdom. It's 
Solomon did. And if you'll turn to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, we'll read a little bit about Solomon and his wisdom. <clears throat> and the story here picks up shortly after his father David has gone, passed away. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. I'm not sure that that's the right chapter. 2 Chronicles, verse 7. If you find it, brother, holler it out. I, 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 I left the chapter off. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Solomon, a wise man. Uh, he's accredited to writing three books in the Bible. He wrote the Proverbs, he wrote the Ecclesiastes, he wrote the Song of Solomon. He has his place in there. He was a man of God, Solomon was. In that night God did appear to Solomon and said unto him, Ask what you will. Because if he was in, David had left it to him to build the temple for God. So God, God and Solomon communicated. And God said, ask what you will and you'll, you'll receive it. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father and hast made me to reign over in his stead. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge. Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. You may not know, but the, the blueprints for the temple were already there. David had gave them to Solomon to build the great temple. But Solomon understood he may lack the wisdom to do it. He may lack the wisdom to reign over a multitude of people to get God's work accomplished. God knows I lack the wisdom. When I was a young man and I first read this scripture, I did the same thing Solomon did. I said, God, I don't want anything. Just give me wisdom. Just give me some wisdom, and I'll be fine. So I did that same thing, and I do believe God gave me some wisdom. Solomon said that I might go out and come in before this people, for whom can judge this people that are so great. And God said to Solomon, because this was thine heart, and thou hast not asked for riches or wealth or honor nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast thou asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give these riches and wealth and honor and such as none of the kings that have before have been before thee, neither shall there be any after thee. Have the like. You should read about Solomon in his life. Mm -hmm. You should read the Proverbs. You should you better read the you want some wisdom, you need to read the Proverbs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want some wisdom, you need to read the Ecclesiastes. If you want some more wisdom, you need to read the Song of Solomon. So I, I did the same thing Solomon did. I, I asked, Lord, give me the wisdom. You know, that's, that's the main thing. But you know, as I went through life, I, I found out, if I went through studying the Bible, that there's no salvation in wisdom. 
through here. There are some people that are endued out with all the knowledge in the world and yet lack wisdom. And there are some very wise people that lack salvation. Wisdom ain't going to save you. Knowledge ain't going to save you. And if you read, if you read the Chronicles and Kings, you'll see where Solomon did build the temple. Mm -hmm. He built it. And it was just as God ordered it. It was according to the blueprints that God had gave him. And so Solomon had enough wisdom not to lay the cement until the pipe work was done. You know what I mean? That there was an order in the knowledge that he had. It had to be done in a certain way, in a certain type. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 25. This is just a few verses that I put down. And Solomon said, I applied thy heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and, to, and the reason of things and to know the wickedness of folly and of foolishness and madness. Not only did God give Solomon wisdom, Solomon applied everything in his life to, to increasing that wisdom to know what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong. He applied his heart to it. Again, in Ecclesiastes 1.13, he said, I gave my heart to seek and to search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therein. And then in, in, in Ecclesiastes 1 and 18, Solomon admits, for in much wisdom there's much grief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of grief in knowing a lot of things. Hey, Politics would be a good example of that. That's right. So through my life, I, I applied the same thing. So I, I wanted to know it all. I wanted to find out, is it good? Is it bad? Is it wise? I'm telling myself a little bit, that's the main reason I'm I, I shudder when I step up here in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. Main reason I've never wanted to be a pastor. Because I put my hand in a lot of things in, in concerning wisdom that I should have never done. Just like Solomon did. I wanted to know you're speaking in politics. I wanted to know what was right about it, what was wrong about it. And hey, when you find out, when you start finding these things out, when you get a little wisdom, you'll find out you're out there alone. That the people you thought had your back were shooting you in the back. Yeah. There was a, it, I'm not going to tell you what the issue is, but there was an issue several years ago. And I just had to know, was it true? What, what was the deal with it? I call it a conspiracy theory. So I set my heart to know. I researched, I studied. I looked into this, I looked into that. I listened to this guy, I listened to that guy. Listen, listen to me, young people. However bad you think it is, 
However bad you think it is, mm -hmm. it's worse. Yeah. So in this research, in this study, I've seen things. I read things. I saw things that now I pray to God I wish I hadn't known. I wish I hadn't known. I wish I hadn't saw. Yeah. You can do things in your life that will never leave you. It'll be right there. Beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's where you start. It's not at Fox News or MSNBC. It's in the Bible. Yeah. It's in the Word of God. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's where you start. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. When you start getting the knowledge of the holy, then the wisdom comes. They, they interact with each other. First Corinthians 3.19 says, For the wisdom of the world is foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise, that's the wise, in their own craftiness. <laughs> and there's a lot of wise, crafty people out there. I'm going to touch on that just a little bit more in just one more minute. But we got to get through this to get to that. Listen, Paul told Timothy that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now there's a hunk of wisdom right there for you. James 1 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. You lack wisdom? Ask God. Amen. You lack wisdom? Read what God said. Yes. Read His Word. A lot of people think they know God and they've never read the Bible. Never. Yeah. And they think they're wise in their own mind. There is a philosophy for everything under the sun. Atheism has its philosophy. Buddhism has its philosophy. Humanists have their philosophy. Reincarnationists have their philosophy. You know, and if you look into those things, there is some wisdom in what are found in there. And through my life, I've studied these things. I looked into them. I wanted to know. But thankfully I turn to God because I lack wisdom and I asked him and he said look at, look, look at this look, what about this you know in all those philosophies and all that searching and all that search for wisdom in all these things I never found redemption in yeah. any of them they all lack redemption 
Some of them have a form of redemption. But when you start searching into that wisdom, you'll see that falls way short too. So I stole something. Stole it. I've done that before, you know. Some wisdom says, cut your hand off for penance and you'll be just fine with God. Oh, that, that makes some sense. Makes a little bit of sense. There's even some scriptures that say, you know, I offend you, you know, pluck it out. But look, when I cut my hand off and that blood comes out, that's a thief's blood spilling out there. That's a thief's blood. That hand's already stolen. Have you ever wondered back through history? <clears throat> that it's, even today, the Satanists, it's their thing. They want, a, they want an infant or a young child to sacrifice. They want innocence. And even in that, it's not innocence. You, were, you came out of your mother's room speaking lies. That's the importance of Christ. That's the importance of the sacrifice that He gave. Because His hand never stole, whereas mine did. His, his lips never lied, whereas mine did. He never went those places I went. My blood is not good enough for penance. And neither is yours. James asked the question, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? He asked them the question, Who's, who's wise here? Let him show it out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. But if you have a bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. Listen, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly and sensual and devilish. what I said before. There's a lot of wise people out there that are Satan father. I think we have some in our office the high office in this nation. Wisdom can, can have every attribute of the devil as it does of God. It's not a key thing. <clears throat> For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Hmm. You find that in the gospel. You find that in the philosophy of the gospel. It's full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Sometimes a lot of folks wonder, why are you so anti-war? Uh, uh, that's because I'm a peaceful man. Uh, I, I'm called to peace! I'm all for defense. 
You attack me, I'm probably going to defend myself. But I'm not going to attack you first. Right. Because the scripture calls me to peace. So back to Timothy, uh, Paul said, uh, the Holy Scriptures are able to make you wise in the salvation. Over and over again, the Bible tells you to be not wise in your own concept of yourself. I know a lot of preachers like that. Boy, if you, if you just say anything, oh, they're all, uh, I know it all, I know it all. We've had a few here. <laughs> that really turns me down. When, when a preacher depends more on his own knowledge and wisdom than he does on what the scripture says. And we've all met them. <clears throat> I've read it. I'm right. And, and whatever you say doesn't matter. And, and for that matter, if you don't like it, you can leave. That's not sown in peace. I long for the day when I finish preaching that a crowd of people mob me and say, what did you say that for? Because I, I, I want to be able to tell them. And the first thing I'll start with is, I don't know it all. I can only tell you what I do know and what I have been through. So the Bible says, don't be wise. Don't think yourself more than you are. You, even somebody that has the whole Bible memorized, they, they can be lost. <clears throat> the folks that have the, I, I worry about the guys that do have it all memorized because it's almost like it's just regurgitation but they don't really know that the redemption part of it the peace part of it the meek part of it so all those philosophies I went through Searched them all out. I found no redemption there. Because the wisdom God gave me, first of all, was you lack. He said, Craig, you're lacking. You can't save yourself. And you can be the smart, smartest man on earth. You can be like Solomon. That's not going to save you. So when I search these philosophies, I look for that redemption part in there. I look for something that would cover all my wrong deeds, all my wrong thoughts, all my wrong doings. Reincarnation is a, you just do it again until you get it right. And if you do better, you go up the scale. And if you do worse, you go down the scale. And pretty soon you're a bug. I didn't find no redemption in that. I didn't find no sacrifice in that. But God instilled it in my heart that those were the important things. Those were the things that I needed. I needed somebody perfect that loved me enough to die for me. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the Mayan culture, they didn't throw the harlots in the volcano. You had to be a virgin. That, and that's tough stuff. And I know there's some young folks here, and I'm, I'm sorry, but it, it's fact I, I've tried to put it in as 
gentle a context as I can. So you watch yourself out there because they are looking for young and innocent people. You better have your eye open. You better be wise. You better walk circumspectly. You know. Circumspectly. That's like a cat walking on top of a wall that's full of broken glass. You pick your steps, you choose your steps, you look around. But mainly you trust in God. Read the scriptures. Be wise unto salvation. Understand what it says. Understand that you, you're in need. And understand that Christ, through his perfect life, was able to be a sufficient sacrifice for you. He was sufficient in everything he did. Everything he said. And understand above all that wisdom is not going to save you. Not going to save you. And you don't have to get out there and try everything to gain wisdom. When God says if you lack it, it's in the scripture. Turn to this book. Read this book. Gain wisdom. Because wisdom is not going to save you. And with that, I'm going to close, brother. I know I'm a little early, and it's, it is what it is.